Okay, so this is the vector OA. We can name it as such, right? OA with an arrow above it. The reason we, why we put an arrow above it is because um, the vector takes us from O to A, okay? The arrow head that's pointing in that direction, okay, of travel. Now in the exam paper or worksheet, it'll be bolded. So you won't have the arrow there. It'll just be OA bolded. However, we can't write, we can't make it bold when we're writing. So we put an arrow there to show the direction. Now had the arrow be going that way, we, we then write AO. So we put it the other way around. We say AO with the, with the arrow obviously going from A to O then. Okay, but the arrow is going that way. So we're going from O to A, okay. Now, um, that does describe the vector, okay, because ultimately it represents a displacement, okay, so we're going from a certain position to another position, okay, and the letters at the end of the line segment here can help us describe that displacement. Now, often they'll also tell us that OA is actually equal to something else, okay, so um, another way we could name this is to call it little a, okay. So going from O to A, that vector there, that displacement, we can call little a. And again, it's bolded in a text uh, um, on a worksheet or on an exam paper. But um, when we write it, we just underline then the little letters. Okay. Right. So we've got then in B, O, A, B, C is a square. Given that O, A is little a and OC is little c. Show two ways of finding the vector OB. So again, you'll notice OA is bolded. Okay, so that's the vector. Um, and same with OC and the little ones are bolded as well. Um, but when we write it, we're going to put an arrow above it. Now OB, okay, um, you can draw in is essentially that displacement there, okay, that movement from O to B. Okay, so when I write that here, I'm going to write OB with the arrow there. Now, um, we can look at ways of working out what OB is by finding alternative routes. So, for instance, I could go, instead of going directly OB, I could go O to C, C to B. Okay, I, I could do that. So I'd write that then as, okay, so O to B would be O to C. Okay. Plus then, so I've gone along here, and then I'm going to go along here, plus C to B. Now I'm told O to C is little c, so I'll write little c there. Now C to B, I'm not told what it is, however, you should recognize C to B is parallel to O to A, and it's the same length, isn't it, because it's a square. Opposite sides are equal length, so that will be little a as well. So I've got my answer then, c plus a. Um, alternative approach, well, I could have done, I could have gone this way, couldn't I? O to b, I could have gone o a. Along there, and then a b. Of course, we know OA is little a. AB we're not given. However, you should notice that it's parallel to and equal in length to this side. So um, we've got little c there. Okay, for that, and you can see they're both the same. Okay, just the other way written, the other way around, but the summation is the same. And we can say that these are equal, essentially. Okay, so the vector O to B is equal to the combination of these two. Okay, so O to B is the same as O to C plus C to B. Now you might question, well actually it's further distance to go that way. Okay, so going directly, it's, it's you traveling further distance, and that's true. Okay, it is true, it is a lot further to travel that way. However, a vector, okay, not only takes into account the distance traveled, but also the, the direction as well. Okay, and ultimately you need, just need to appreciate in both situations, you know, if I went directly from O to B, okay, where do I end up at? Well, I end up at B. I started at O, I end up at B. And the same situation will occur if I go a different route. If I go from O to C and then C to B. I started at O, but I still ended up at B. So the displacement is the same, okay? So that's why I can say these two are equal. 
because this sort of takes into account that displacement idea. Uh, finally then C, Tim travels from A to C, determine the vector AC. Okay, well, um, AC, if you think about it, um, AC is direct there, we can draw it in if you want. Well, we can go an alternative approach, we can go A to B, couldn't we? Plus B to C. A to B is little a, and B to C is little c. So that would be the approach that I can even write it in if you want. Okay, to get from A to C, the displacement is going along A and then along C. Okay, that's the summation there. Um, and then Tim travels back from A uh, to A from C. So he goes backwards now, determine the vector CA. So what's the reverse process? Now you just need to appreciate those words I just used there. It's it, the reverse process, yeah? CA, CA ultimately is the reverse process of A to C, okay? So you're just reversing that. You're doing the opposite of this. The opposite of this, of course, will be then minus of A to C. So it'll be the minus of this answer.